Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we are going over the earnings report and earnings call of Kalike and Sofa Industries. I think it was a very good report, but the stock did fall. So we are going to discuss this in depth. I made a few changes to the portfolio. I bought the dip in Alibaba, they went down 11% and wiped most of my profits in my portfolio. I bought some more Vici properties and of course bought a lot more Kalike and Sofa Industries. I completely sold out of my positions in Plug Power and Baidu. Plug Power ran up a bit too much in my opinion so I took 60% profits on the stock. I'll probably buy back uh, a hydrogen ETF in the future when the prices of hydrogen stocks go down again. Next to this my positions in Chinese stocks got a bit too big and I saw a better opportunity so I sold out of Baidu shares. I also read the latest earnings report and was not a big believer in their future growth. I think Baidu is holding way too many cash and is not investing enough into growth or giving something back to shareholders through dividends or buybacks. So let's jump right into the earnings of Kulike and Sofa Industries. The company reported a revenue of $485 million and earnings per share $2.17. Both beat the average analyst expectations. Something very important to look at is that they are growing their net income faster than their revenue. This is very good news which means our company is earning more money while still growing and increasing their revenues rapidly. They were able to exceed revenue expectations by temporarily extending production capacity and delivering additional advanced display systems and services. From what I read, Kulika and Sofa is trying really hard to serve their customers in the ongoing ship shortage, which can have a positive impact on long-term relations with their customers. The CEO said, Throughout fiscal 2021, we continue to support an ongoing period of industry expansion while carefully navigating global supply chain challenges. Additionally, we continued our aggressive development efforts, released several new market-ready solutions and also received customer acceptance with several others. These efforts expand our access to favorable long-term trends within the automotive, electronics assembly and advanced display end markets. This year Click had a record revenue of more than $1.5 billion, which is higher than their last two years combined. The company also did $10 million in share buybacks this year. This is good news, less shares outstanding means that your shares increase in value. I expect Click doing a lot more share buybacks given the low valuation, current PE below 10, and the amount of cash that they have. They ended last quarter with $740 million in cash, cash equivalents and short term investments, which is a crazy amount for a $3.5 billion company. For the next fiscal year. Kalika and Sofa expects a revenue of $460 million and $1.88 in earnings per share. These are lower than this quarter, but still beating analyst average estimates. The company has fluctuating revenue because of seasonal difference. If you look at year-over-year -year revenue growth for the next quarter, Click's revenue would grow 72%. That is everything but slow. You can expect earnings per share to grow even more given the amount of share buybacks. No, I want to show you some parts of the earnings call that I think are important to know and understand. First of all, the CEO mentions that there is a disruption in global supply chain due to power outages in China, COVID and transportation challenges. In clicks on industry, there are constraints related to substrate and wafer capacity capacity shortfall, but Click sees improvement in this near-term issue. They see improvements in Braver towards the end of fiscal 2022, so around next year September. The wafer shortage gives the industry the inability to meet end markets demand. 
but they are more than ready for the next layer of end market demand and favorable technology transition, which they are directly involved in, well established and set to accelerate over the long term. In short, this means Click expects growth, which they are well positioned for. They are active in some of the quickest emerging markets like advanced display, 5G, electrical vehicle transition and semiconductors in consumer devices. The long-term trend gives them more visibility and growth potential, where I do agree with. For 2022, they expect another very strong year. A lot of promising words so far by the CEO. They seem to be ready for what is coming. The next one at board is the CFO. Some weeks ago, Click announced they would increase their dividend. The CFO explains that the dividend allows them to provide consistent returns to long-term shareholders. They plan to keep the dividend competitive to their peers. Given the cash they hold, this is a wise decision to give back more to the shareholders. But the CFO is not done yet. He sees something more important. The current market valuation is in his opinion undervalued and they have prioritized to increase activity in buybacks, which is again very good for us shareholders. In the last 6 weeks they already bought back 75% of the amount they did last year. This indicates that they are really certain about the future growth and good valuation of the company. The CFO also mentions that they are having some cash constraints in the near term and expect this to be solved by the second half of 2022. Maybe by then we can expect even more aggressive buybacks, dividend growth or investments. Only time will tell. The current strength is supporting their view of a multi-year industry expansion period and keeps them well on track and potentially exceed their long-term financial targets. What blows my mind at the moment is that given the pressure and increased capacity, they can still increase their profitability more and more. After this report I was really excited to buy more of the company. While being busy I had a quick look at the market and saw Click was down 7% after earnings. So right when I saw it. I bought 13 more shares of the company. It was not my intention to buy so much of the company, but I was in a hurry. In my opinion, the company is well positioned for the next years and I expect them to grow into the new emergent sectors to provide solutions. Some might expect slowing growth, but given the cash they hold and good management decisions, this should not be a problem. I am really a fan of the dividend and buybacks they are doing now for sure at this valuation. I don't want to scream too early, but this might be a multi-bagger. This was everything for today, thanks for watching, subscribe and smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section or send me an email. Below the video you can find the link to Bucks Zero and Bucks Crypto where you can get a free share when you top up your account. Take care and see you in the next video.